Thanks for watching CBS 8 Plus and welcome to this throwback special. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. Here at CBS 8, we've been covering San Diego for more than 70 years and brought you a lot of memorable moments. And in these throwback specials, we get to relive some of San Diego's incredible history with you. That includes some amazing concerts back in the 1980s. We start out with a new wave band riding high as Devo came into town to whip it, whip it good. To some people, the streets and sidewalks around the California theater must have resembled Halloween or a scene from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. But for new waivers and punk rock fans alike, it was the highlight of the summer scene because the group Devo was in town. And it was definitely a dress-up affair, dyed hair and asbestos suits optional. The concert opened with a film featuring the group's earlier material, which quickly turned into a sing-along. Devo, with four albums under their belts and several national TV appearances, is all the rage these days among a growing cult following. But no matter how outrageous their fans or devotees may act, they can't match the annex of the band itself. Devo's music often resembles 1960s top 40 hits being programmed through a computer. However, if you don't understand New Wave, you can't criticize the music. You can only judge the crowd reaction. And a sold-out house at the California Theater loved what they heard and saw. Larry Himmel, News 8. Devo is actually short for devolution. Uh, unfortunately, it could be applied to the California theater. It's now in disrepair and likely to be torn down. Some of the biggest talents from the British invasion of the 1960s were still at their peak in the 1980s with massive tours stopping in San Diego, including the Rolling Stones, The Who and Rod Stewart. CBS 8 caught all of them in action. First up for us, Rod Stewart. He had come a long way from his time with the Jeff Beck group and was on his Le Grand tour in support of his 11th studio album. Our Larry Himmel caught the show. Sunday night veteran rock and roller Rod Stewart brought his La Grande Tour to the sports arena. The 36-year-old Stewart strutted on stage dressed as if his clothes were stolen from Phyllis Diller's wardrobe with his rooster-like hair and outrageous stage presence. His raspy voice and raw energy are Stewart's strong suits, equally adept on ballads and rockers. His music is simple, basic, good fun, and downright infectious. Stewart's lyrics focus on the youthful search for freedom and sexual awareness. For 20 years, Rod Stewart has been a potent force in rock music. In 1971, the hit song Maggie May established him as a major artist. His latest best-selling album, Tonight I'm Yours, contains his most recent top 10 single, Young Turks. Next Saturday, Rod Stewart's concert from the L.A. Forum will be simulcast on radio and TV to 25 countries around the world. When Rod Stewart sings his songs and struts his stuff, a good time is had by all. Larry Himmel, News 8. Rod Stewart was bandmates with Ron Woods in the Faces Band. That was before Mick's, Mick Jagger stole him for the Rolling Stones. Speaking of which, the Stones, their American tour in 1981 was a real juggernaut. It hit stadiums from coast to coast. They were promoting their multi-platinum album, Tattoo You, and bringing new hits like Start Me Up and Waiting on a Friend to the fans. They were such a big deal when they hit Jack Murphy Stadium that CBS 8 needed team coverage. 
Things were pretty mellow in the stadium parking lot during the early morning hours following an all-night camp out that included about 10,000, quite enough to allow a few sleepy heads to catch a few extra winks in the sunshine. But as you might expect, there was activity around the portable bathrooms and at the head of the lines where the most avid fans camped out to be the first ones in. What was it like last night? It was crazy. People all over the place. Just people drinking, partying, everything else. Oh, it was great. Everybody had a wild time. Everybody was just partying and drinking beer, smoking pot, and just hanging out, waiting for, waiting for the stones to come on today. It was real mellow in this line. You know, we had a good time. Everyone's sleeping out, lots of room. By mid-morning, a party goer or two could barely walk. Some spent a lot of money for a concert they may never see. The gates were supposed to open by 10, but when there were delays, the crowd got restless. The idea was to let them in slowly, 50 at a time, so they could be given the once-over for drugs and weapons. The gates were opened finally at 1040, and the hope for a trickle turned into a frenzied rush. few managed to slip past without a search, but for the most part, it was a friendly and somewhat cooperative crowd. When it's all over, the Rolling Stones concert is expected to rank as the largest musical extravaganza the city of San Diego has ever known. The 10,000 or so who camped out here last night are expected to swell to something like 70,000 for the actual concert itself. So the Rolling Stones are going to get a royal welcome in San Diego. And Shaw, News 8 at the stadium. Those who survived an afternoon of partying hardy, an hour later than advertised, finally saw the curtains part and out strutted the court jester of rock and roll, Mick Jagger and his Rolling Stones. They opened the concert with the sexist anthem, Under My Thumb. The Stones performed 22 songs. They did them all, from their latest best-selling album, Tattoo You, to the classics, Let's Spend the Night Together, Time's on My Side, Beast of Burden, You Can't Always Get What You Want, Honky Tonk Woman, Jumpin' Jack, Flash, and Brown Sugar. Most rock and roll groups tire of playing their old material in concert, so they tend to rush through it. But the Stones played recent material as well as their classics with equal fervor. All the while, the twisting, turning, prancing, dancing, 38-year-old Jagger in constant motion. On stage, he's a human gyroscope. It's a real testimonial that the Stones, who first gained popularity in 1964, can still find themselves on top of the charts 17 years later. You'll get some argument if you call the Rolling Stones the greatest rock and roll band of all times, but they are definitely the hottest band around today. And on Wednesday night at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium, you can find almost 70,000 fans who will testify to that fact. For News 8, I'm Larry Himmel at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. Jack Murphy Stadium was the place to be for a lot of shows. In fact, in 1982, the band The Who, they came to town and they felt like things were coming to an end. Original drummer Keith Moon had died three years earlier and they just weren't feeling it. But you wouldn't know it by the band's performance or the excitement of the crowd at Jack Murphy. They hit San Diego and supported their 10th studio album, It's Hard. They started arriving Sunday, first the production crew to set the stage. The Who got here yesterday, as did the fans, who began lining up at the stadium around 4.30 in the afternoon. By 6 p.m. today, the stadium was nearly full, with 50,000 rock and rollers that came to say farewell to one of the industry's most powerful groups. One person we spoke to even said he flew all the way in from Guam for this event. The concert began right at 5 with warm-up acts John Cougar and Loverboy. But this is what the fans came to see.
Police reports indicate there were some stabbings and a robbery earlier in the evening, but once the WHO came on stage, the crowd was well behaved. There were only isolated incidents involving drugs and alcohol, but security was quick, tight, and extremely effective in quashing any questionable activity before it got out of hand. Pretty well behaved crowd? Yes, they are. Overall, it's pretty well behaved. Uh, no major incidents that I know of at this time. But there have been how many uh, arrests for drugs and alcohol? Uh, 37, the last report I got. From here, the WHO take off to the L.A. Coliseum, so if you didn't catch the show tonight, you can rock out in L.A. on Friday. Susan Lichtman, News 8. That was supposed to be the WHO's farewell tour, but they'd reunite for various individual performances as well as more tours. Now, while the Stones, Rod, and the WHO were the veteran rock and roll giants, in 1983, new wave had taken root and the modern rock sound was starting to really emerge. That's when an upstart radio station with a transmitter in Mexico, 91X, held their first big concert. Carlos Amezcua was the reporter, taking in the Ramones, modern English, and many more, as well as some cutting edge hairstyles. What you are seeing is all very modern, so they say, modern to the young people who are here for the first ever modern music festival. Okay, they dress weird. Okay, maybe real weird. But not all of San Diego's young people who enjoy modern music shave or color their hair. You can be part of the new music yeah, without shaving normal. your head. Enjoy it. I know. You can be normal and enjoy it, man. You don't have to be like those guys out there. Why is your hair like that? Because I like it this style. Why is your hair like that? Because I like it this style. The festival is loud, but it is modern. The music must be good, or else there wouldn't be 25,000 people here. Suddenly, I don't feel so modern. Carlos Amesqua, News 8, at the X Festival. Yeah, why is your hair like that, Carlos? Good energy from that young lady. All right, from modern rock to modern pop, one of the biggest acts of the 80s was known by a single name, Madonna. She exploded on the scene in the mid-1980s, stopping in San Diego in 1985, hitting the stage at SDSU's Open Air Theater. She was an inspiration to young fans, many teenage girls who loved her material girl image and thrift shop sensibilities. She's from just outside Detroit. The music reflects that as well as New York. Take a thrift store wardrobe, a lot of serious dance moves, and a lot of come on moves. And if sex is what's selling, Madonna is selling. In concert, records, video, and now movies. Gary, why didn't you tell me she read the personals? You could have settled this yesterday. She, she read them all the time. I, I, I didn't think... Yeah, well, I, I, fortunately I, for everybody, I'm here. Maybe she hasn't reached the superstar status of a Michael Jackson or a Springsteen, but there was enough of the Madonna image to rub off in a serious way for perhaps millions of girls, material or not. Many tonight were unadulterated fans. Heather Campley is 15 years old. She says she recently won a Madonna look-alike contest like many who want to look like Madonna. I like Madonna because she kind of reminds me of myself because I've always wanted to be outgoing and really flirty and stuff, and that's kind of the way she is. For a famous star to dress thrift store fashion, it makes a lot of difference, and people can afford thrift store fashion, and that's why they like her. <laughs> we love Madonna, let's say it. We love Madonna. <laughs> Okay, there's more to music than just pop and rock, though. And if anyone was as famous in music as Mick Jagger and Madonna back then, it would have been Luciano Pavarotti. The powerful Italian tenor was a worldwide sensation. He sold more than 100 million records. The crowds at his shows, a little different than the others we've just seen, with fans paying up to $500 for front row tickets. That's all the way back in 1985. 
Wearing a beret because he said he didn't want his head to get cold, Luciano Pavarotti arrived at the Sheraton Harbor Island Hotel. He's riding the crest of his career. How could he be cold with so much warmth directed at him? I talked with Pavarotti, who soon will make a movie. Uh, if he make you laugh, uh, make me laugh too. So it's going to be a light comedy? I think uh, I think so. It's a comedy. I hope it's light. I don't. I I, I hope it's lovable. I mean, li like they oh, like. Are you going to play the role of a music teacher? Yeah. We'll see. Then it was off to meet some of the 600 people who paid as much as $250 each to attend the benefit. The Opera Association should add some $80,000 to its account. San Diego Opera has reached the major league level, but it took the appearance of Luciano Pavarotti to put the frosting on the cake. They heard him, but much later in the evening. The king of the high seas, the finest opera singer in America's finest city. John Kalia, News 8. He is a master tenor who prides himself on bringing opera to a mass audience. Credentials that surpass Caruso, but he loads his programs with mostly familiar classics. Oh, so you haven't heard of Luciano Provarati? San Diego has. Most bought their tickets four months ago. And in the front section, special tickets went for $500. And Esther Burnham said even in the front row, that price was cheap for Pavarotti. Oh, yes, Pavarotti's been a favorite of mine for some time. And I've been playing tapes and records of his. And I couldn't even go to sleep last night thinking about him. Indeed, he seems to be popular with opera fans, who may tend to be affluent. But before you presume that a Pavarotti concert means lifestyles of the rich and famous, and I'm Robin Leach, take a look, if you will, at the stage door. This woman flew here from Tennessee tonight on a Super Saver fare. She'll follow her star to Seattle tomorrow. She is neither rich nor famous. She loves Pavarotti. It's like a handkerchief with this gorgeous hunk of man tying to it, you know, and, I, and he started singing, and I was like mesmerized. I thought, I, you know, I couldn't leave. I was trying, I had to go to the bathroom, but I couldn't get him go because I was afraid I'd miss something. And he loves his fans. Always calculating ways to reach a wider audience, Pavarotti believes many of his fans don't know all the words and plots behind his arias. It's the music. It's the voice. Uh, but uh, the beauty of the music is that it's international. And uh, the notes are seven. And the language count and doesn't. But, uh, of course, it's a great uh, opportunity to meet so many people. Great for me. Patrick Crosby, News 8. Uh, thank you so much for watching this throwback special. No curtain call for us tonight, but we'll be back. Uh, to see more throwbacks like this on CBS 8 Plus, click on the News tab at the top of the screen. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. We'll see you next time.